The old school record deal is not looking like a great option these days, I don't think, for new artists because the money's there. They're just not being paid. Mm, mm, mm. Creator news. Welcome to Creator News, Two Filters investigative news show where each week we delve into a topic that affects you, the creator. Creator News is brought to you by Patreon, the platform that gets creators paid. This week on Creator News, we're talking about the music industry. Drew, your quarantine hair is getting out of control. I know, I'm grooming myself to look like a rock star. I mean, we're YouTubers now. Isn't that the next phase in a YouTuber's career? Get really popular and then launch your own musical album? Get signed and go platinum? That's the ultimate goal, right? In life? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Creator News is still working on its popularity, which you can help with. And second, a career as a musician might not be as flashy as you think. Oh no? Oh yes. Oh no. Mm, 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 mm. Creator news. For decades, the dream had always been simple for aspiring musicians. Play out, get discovered, meet some guy who's gonna like just take you from like playing for five people to playing for a million and make a bajillion dollars and live in a mansion on the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, Josh, that's what I'm talking about. But it's not so simple anymore, Drew. With the advent of streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and even YouTube, the proposition of being a musician today is just totally different. This is Ray Zaragoza, a folk artist who owns her own music label. She's a self-described DIY artist who's part of this new generation of musicians who are taking advantage of the connected world in which we now live. Well, you know, the music industry has changed so much uh, with social media, um, with just the internet in general. You know, like record sales is not the way that people, that musicians make money anymore. This is true. I haven't bought an album in years, not even digitally. Exactly. So the concept of a record deal has fundamentally changed. Here's how it used to work. You will sign for an advance that you will pay back. And that split of income is usually going to be around 80% in the record company's favor, 20% to the artist. Holy cow. This is Katie Tunstall, a singer, songwriter, and musician whose album Eye to the Telescope sold over 5 million copies. Say you're given 50 to 100 grand as an advance to live on, you pay that back through your percentage. They do not recoup through that enormous 80, 75, 80%. They're just taking that as profit. Why do labels take so much? Well, they do that because launching a musical artist is a lot more expensive than you think. Major labels have in-house teams as well. So they have a radio plugger, they've got um, marketing people, they've got an art department. And if you are going independently, which I tried to do to start with, um, these are expensive. Right, so why not just let the labels pay for all that? There is a flip side to that. The artist also isn't in control at all of what is being spent. So the record company might decide to spend $2 million on you. Wow, that's great. However, 1.7 million of that might be recoupable money that you have had no say in how that marketing campaign is put together. I had no idea. I've been offered different deals, um, but every time I've walked away because I've been like, this is crazy. Like, why would I give away all my rights <laughs> and all my money? Right? The reason that people still keep signing these deals is it is so competitive out there. It's incredibly difficult to be seen and heard. If an artist needs to rely on promotion by the labels to be heard, that obviously puts them in a vulnerable position. And the media companies can take full advantage of that leverage. Time and again, we see musicians lash out at media companies that control their work. From Prince with Warner Brothers, Taylor Swift with BMLG, and most recently, Kanye West with Universal Music. The problem is the major labels have a really, really awful history of financial exploitative behavior where they're not paying fairly, they're making a lot of money, they're not paying artists an awful lot, these deals, historically are hugely skewed in their favor because they're dealing with people who desperately want a career in music. Right, but things seem to be changing now. I think Nipsey Hussle put it best. And I need radio to do mine, I done fine. For sure, with new ways of discovering music from TikTok to YouTube to Spotify playlists, artists can go viral and skyrocket to stardom without the promotional machinery of a big record label behind them. And you don't have to be Chance the Rapper to make it big without a record deal. I think we're at a real turning point where, where young artists 
need to develop more of a responsibility of their own business. And that is exactly what they're doing. I've always like called myself like a DIY artist. Like I really like doing things myself and being in full control. And that's kind of the where the creative fulfillment lives is not only in the music, but also in the creative control of the back end of the business. So because no one is fronting you the money in the form of an advance, you have to raise the money on your own, which I've done through Patreon and pay them on your own. But then you're also keeping 100% of your rights to your music. The open and democratic nature of the internet allows for unprecedented opportunity to self-publish and be discovered. But even if you are able to break through the noise, the 40,000 songs on Spotify uploaded every day, you still need major support to sustain that success. And how critical is this promotion to an artist's success? To get an answer to that question and more, we talked to Matt Medved. He's the former editor-in-chief of Spin Magazine and the founder of Billboard Dance. Even with a hit like Old Town Road, which was a viral hit, that, that wouldn't have become the longest running number one, Billboard number one hit of all time if they hadn't gotten Billy Ray Cyrus on it. And there's no way that little Nas X in his, uh, I believe he was like sleeping in his sister's, on like the floor of like his sister's room, like, or like, you know, in, in her house, there's no way that he was gonna make that happen, you know? But the label has those relationships, has that, that power, and that was the label creating value. In the past, labels used to cultivate their artists. It would oftentimes take several albums to develop one hit. It was a real investment. But now those labels are able to make safer bets on artists who are gaining traction on social media where all the numbers are transparent. It seems like the longevity of artists' careers has shortened. Record companies um, have really got into more of a habit of wanting return on their artists' success much quicker and are much less likely to risk funding an artist over a long period of time to see what happens. Macklemore did it this way, Tori Kelly did it this way, Justin Bieber was discovered on YouTube before he signed to a label. So it seems like there's only one of two options. You can be a huge viral hit being propelled by a major label into mega stardom, or you can be an indie artist trying to make a living playing as many gigs as possible. And you can't even do that anymore. Really, the biggest way musicians are making money was through touring. And now, like, touring is almost a thing of the past, which is so weird to think about. My touring was, like, 80% of my income. So that's live shows and live merchandising. So without touring, how are artists making a living? Well, some massive artists can make a lot of money on the streaming platforms. For most, it's not nearly enough. Spotify reports that it pays out between 0 0.00331 and $0.00437 per stream to rights holders. That's not sustainable. Reminds me of our TikTok Creator Fund episode. Streaming is a tricky world for us right now. The problem is that the streaming platforms are doing massive agreement deals with particularly the major, the major labels for completely non-transparent amounts of money so that the DSPs can use the back catalogs of the major labels. The major labels are not disclosing how much these deals are being done for, and they are then just paying crumbs. Sony and Universal both posted streaming income of over a billion in their first quarter of 2020. Whereas you have a classical violinist posting on Twitter that she's had 10 million plays and she's made a few hundred bucks. And what makes this even tougher for musicians is that some of the biggest shareholders in the streaming services are the labels themselves. So no one's really advocating on behalf of the artists. I know this keeps coming up in all our videos. So not to sound like a broken record, not to sound like a broken record, not to sound like a broken record. Yeah, we get it. Thank you. But we say it again and again. It is so important to diversify your income streams. I guess when you're an independent artist, it's really all about diversifying and getting really creative, getting really scrappy, um, and also like, you know, sync licensing and whatever. And understanding that if you have like 75% of your income in one place, you're really vulnerable. I don't know any artist that relies only on streaming royalties, but you get a playlist placement on a streaming, a music streaming platform. Yes, you're going to get streams, which, you know, will, will equate to some more revenue in the short term. But what I think you're really getting more valuably is you're getting an opportunity to open a door and create a fan with, with every listener. And 
that opportunity in the long run is more valuable than whatever you're getting on the stream. That is really sound advice. We must be getting to the end of the episode. I'm gonna let you finish. But like I said in the last episode, the more that creators can feel empowered to take ownership of their creative work and the business that runs it, the less BS is needed for them to be sustainable and successful and happy. Taking all of this into account, what we're seeing here is with the massive streaming platforms and the global online community, there's more opportunity than ever before to make it big as a musical artist. But there is a lot more competition too. Breaking through that noise without any outside support is a long shot. So the same gears and levers that power the analog music era are still here today. They just have different names. Radio promotion is now playlist promotion. a &R is now data analytics. And big media, well, that's still big media. The point is, if you don't like the rules of the game, you don't have to play by them anymore. Major labels to this day ha are huge gatekeepers and they, they have all of this power. Um, but for me, like that just doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> it sounds like being a part of a giant American corporate machine. And that's just not what my music has ever really stood for. It's really about using my own voice. And so having full control has been something that's very genuine to the music I'm making. Hey, maybe you'll get lucky and write the next Old Town Road and become an overnight success. Or you could do the hard work and build a community, member by member, who will support your creative endeavors in the long run. It may not sound as sexy, but there's nothing more attractive than a stable income. And if I don't have to cut my hair for a job, that's sexy enough for me. Mm, 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 creator news. This show would not be possible without the support of Patreon. Patreon helps you generate recurring income from your creative work by offering exclusive content and community to your fans. It's a great way to set yourself up for long-term success and reward your most loyal fans along the way. So check out patreon.com slash creator news and change the way your creativity is valued. What issues do you want us to dive into next? Put it in the comments. And if you like this video, like this video. Subscribe if you have not already. Ring the bell. Please share this video with your fellow creators and online video professionals. I'm Drew. And I'm Josh. And this is Creator News. We will see you next week. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Creator News.